Morning, everybody. Do we have audio? Morning. Morning. Hi, Marco. You want to see the puppy? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, girl or boy, what's its name? <laughs> Can't really see her. Hold on. Ziggy. Her name is Ziggy. Cute. She's a girl. There. Oh. Uh, <laughs> she is gorgeous. Is she a retriever or a doodle? No, she's a Great Pyrenees. And oh Lorraine my Pyrenees. goodness. Yes. Yeah. So she's, she's this this very small thing is she's nine weeks old. So she'll be 120 pounds or something? Well, she'll be at least 100, I'm guessing. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Will you, br will you bring her over to play with Ivor? <laughs> yeah. She's, she's, she's been great so far. So. <laughs> Needed a little new excitement in our lives. Well, that'll do it for you. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Can you all hear me? Hi, Josh. Hi. Is my video working? No. Okay. Sorry. I can't make my video work. Are you looking at the lower left um, of your screen, Josh? There is a video camera with a line through it. Yeah. If you click that, that should enable it. Yeah, I just did. I don't, I don't think it works because uh, it's on a monitor. Oh. It might not on a monitor. On you might have to aim your whatever your. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So I'll, I'll be here in voice, but the thing doesn't work. That that's fine. Yeah. Sorry. Can you? But you can see us. I can see. Yeah, I can see okay. you all. This has happened before. It just doesn't work on the thingy. Matt, I had a great dinner at um, New York on the first night you were open. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to have some people back in the dining room. Yeah. It's a little hard to get uh, everybody back up to steam again or just jump right back in? No, they jump right back in. Yeah. They were 
I'm very excited to get back to work. Good. Hey, Bonnie. Hello, hello. How is everyone? Good. I want to compliment you. Your newsletter is so good, and you're doing so many great things. Thank you. Well, I can't totally own the newsletter. Thank goodness Jim's around to yeah. uh, be able to do that for us. But it is definitely a compilation of all of us putting our heads together. Um, gives me time to be able to do all the other things that we're trying to do. You know, um, here's a question that I had about the blue chair um, raffle. Yes, ma'am. Don't you like how it looks at Johan's there? Oh, I love it. What if somebody won it? Would they be able to d donate it to Johan's and would Johan's want it? I guess that would be up to Clayton, um, but he's the one who offered to put the chair there for the visual. Um, I would bet you he'd accept it. Um, if any of you have noticed, Pearson's has a blue chair on their patio that's did not been notice. refurbished and looks beautiful. Yeah, they did a great job with that. They did. So um, I would venture Clayton would be all about it if somebody wanted to donate that to him. Are you kidding? Okay, cool. Or to my fire pit. You're welcome to do oh, that. To you. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have the fire pit discussion on the agenda, Mark, or I'm just trying to look? Yes, we do. Speaking of. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of. Kathy's just waiting for Kathy. I don't see her yet. Nice Victor, to see you're still sharing your screen, just so you know. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I see, I see more people yeah. coming on. Oh, it looks like Kathy might be having trouble. She said she's in, but she's alone. So I don't think she, <laughs> don't think she's in the right link. Argo, maybe she's in the Zoom link you have. Yeah, uh, I just texted her that to go off the email and the agenda. <laughs> we missing Tim? No, oh, I'm here. Not... Okay. I just got up from my chair for a minute. Okay. And we have someone else sitting in for minutes. Could we um, identify who that is? Two, three, one, five, two, six, five, three, six, six. Five, three, six, six is my office number. I have it on my head. Oh, gotcha. I okay. Set it through my computer so that way I can walk about. So we, it looks like we don't have your video. Uh, Sarah, Kathy's saying can't, she can't get in. Um, 
Um, let me try to see if there's anyone in the waiting room. Uh, you can keep knocking, but you cannot come inside. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to send her an invitation also, Victor. We can resend it out. Um, Well, I could show everybody the puppy again, so. <laughs> so cute. Well, I missed that the first time. So. You did miss the puppy the first time. What kind of puppy is it? She's a Great Pyrenees and a Morena, which are basically the same dog. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so she's, she's a big, big giant fluff ball. Fun. Yes, we needed a little extra fun in my house. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what's happening. Maybe I can. Excuse me. We can text her the. Looks like she's connecting. Okay, great. Thanks, Victor. I couldn't get in. You're welcome. No problems. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. I don't know what happened there. It gave me a series of strange messages. That is weird. All right. Well, we're all here if you're ready to start. Yeah, I think I need a cocktail after that rush. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, welcome, every morning, everyone. This is a glorious February morning before something about to come down, which we probably need. So let's relish in what we've had and the snow we need. Uh, Margo, would you like to do the roll call? I will. Kathy Breitner? I'm here. Right after this. Yes. Matt Bugera? Here. Tim Knapp? Here. Josh Baker? Here. Jody Eubank? She's, she's going to have maybe some issues. I know she's out of town. Um, Nikki Law? Here. Dana Mulder? Here. Brian Bedini? Amy Gillard? Here. And Keely Knapp. And I know Keely's got some conflicts with schools too this time. All right. So we do have a quorum. Great. Thank you. First up this morning will be the review of our minutes from January 7th. We've all seen those. Do we have any corrections or additions? And if not, could I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Support, please. Second. Thanks, Matt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. OK, public comments. Do we have anyone on Zoom or chiming in on uh, YouTube? And if not, we can do that again later towards the end. Then let's move forward to number five, which is our COVID-19 updates and issues. Margo? Okay, the only updates that I have are, yay, the restaurants are open for in-person dining at 20, 25%. So that's a great, great step. Um, hopefully you guys, all of you, Matt, and um, well, I guess Jody's not on, but had are starting to see people filling up. and. Um, and then the other one is just that we are still going to be electronic until further notice on our board meetings. I, I, that, that I think we, are, I, we haven't found out a set date on that yet. Victor, do you know anything more? The only thing that I know is the current state epidemic order lasts through February 21st, and you're still only allowed to have no more than two households at a public, indoor public place for a meeting outside of work purposes. So we can't have public meetings um, yet in person. Unless we all move in together. <laughs> yes, I don't think that would fit Harbor Springs definition of a single family, but if you want to come to the planning commission meeting for that discussion, you can. <laughs> <laughs> Will do. <laughs> all right, okay. so. Let's move into the promotions committee reports. Okay. Next up, both on ter in terms of the agenda and next week is the ice test. Yes. Yay. Yay, so we are doing great. We, are, we have um, 43 
small sculptures that have been sponsored. We have um, a the the Ice Throne, which is a premier sponsor for fifteen hundred dollars, and the Petoskey Area Visitors Bureau gave us the sponsorship for a thousand dollars. So we are looking at Victor. Would you let me share the screen? Hi, Willie. Howdy. I'm on Zoom. Oh, are you? Oh, sorry. I'll just drop these right here. Sorry. That's okay. Oh, those are the. I, know oh, I just. Nice. I'll leave right. them. Me... <laughs> so, I'm I'm currently working on the distribution map, so that that we will um. Thank you. Yep. I'll be having that finished up and get in, but right now the Greg from Rock on Ice is working on. All of the sculptures, he has the list and he has been, um, he's working on it and ready to go. So this is where we look like we're on our, on the budget at this point. We have the sponsorship, the income. We have a miscellaneous $200 sp um, sponsor. The Excuse ice me, run. Margo, we, we don't have the screen. We don't have the screen. For. Oh, oh, it says minus paused. I don't know why. Oh, okay. Is that working? No. 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 Okay, it says it's pause. I'm not sure why. Try again. <coughs> Let's see. I have no idea. Why would it? It says started. And it says paused. Okay. Well, try this again. I, I, Joe, I've never seen that before. But you can just tell us the numbers. Okay. That's yeah. Fine. <laughs> so yeah. So it looks like we're um, getting it, it. All told, our income at this point is seventeen thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. Our expenses after you know the hotel advertising, um, uh, Facebook ads, um, and their travel expense expenses is at. $10,230, leaving us with a net income of $7,520 for the, um, for what we're, we're at. Um, right. What that may led me to wonder as I'm doing the distribution map is since we are thinking about, you know, what we're kind of wanting to expand, wanting to do, do we, you know, as the DDA want to purchase I don't know, three smaller sculptures, three pre-carved and place them either in Marina Park or around or do something that, you know, that maybe, you know, obviously the businesses are going to have them in their in front of their businesses. But I didn't know if there was a, you know, a, a nice other locations that we wanted to add to since we are um, looking good and we're not doing any of the, you know, the live big demos that we've done in the past, paid for in the past out of that. My yes, gut reaction is that we're doing fabulously and that we've got far more walking possibilities to view sculptures than last year. And let's use the money for another purpose. But I, I could agree. also be convinced to dress up Marina Park since we're doing the, the tables and the fire pits there. So I'm Are open. They so we're basically at the same as we were last year. We had about 38 um, pre-carved um, sculptures and then we had the five larger yeah. demonstrations. And then obviously then we had the big, the big car ice carving contest and then the big one that we paid for over um, by Zorn Park. So Margo? distance wise, yes. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. What a, how much would like a, a bench or two down by the fire pit be? Do they do ice benches? They do. And I've thought about that. If, even if Good we idea. wanted to do one of the larger, we can do a four block sculpture. Um, even, if, you know, they've got some that are just like four block. The normal sculptures are one block. So four. Um, and that would probably cost us because he would give us that cost probably around eight hundred or seven or eight hundred dollars. Well, that would be kind of cool. And if we I mean, were going to do three small blocks, our cost would be five hundred and twenty-five dollars anyway. Yes, so if we just correct. added a few hundred dollars to that, I I would be more 
inclined to do something different than doing more small blocks, especially if we're going to put them in the park. Um, so maybe something bigger or something interactive if we're going to have fire pits, which I can see we're going to get to that. But um, so that would be my recommendation is to have something maybe different that other people that we don't have yet. I agree. So, so our I interactive options, very our interactive options, because um, we can do, he does something like an ice couch. He does, or, you know, we could look, I could talk to him about a bench or even what he could do two benches for. Um, he can also he do, had, oh, sorry. It's okay. He can also do like, if you want, if we wanted like a larger, like snowman pair or gnome pair, he can remove the faces and people, you know, they would be much larger than the, the normal one block sculptures. And they would, they would stand on the ground on their own and people can walk up and have their picture taken behind them, you know, with their face in, in the sculpture. So those are some of the interactive options. Go ahead, Nikki. I was gonna say they also had, they, they have things like at least from the, I don't know if he's changed what they can do by any, by any stretch of, from what I saw it last, but they have like big snowmobiles that people can do and things like that. So I think maybe picking out something big that way would be, that would be a lot of fun. And I would say if we do something larger, make it interactive, a bench is fine, but once people sit down on it, then nobody else can sit down on it. But if you, if it's something that with a, um, like the gnome with the faces that you can just pop in and out and take pictures, then it allows more people to participate in it in a, a closer time frame. I agree. I like the idea of the picture taking pop. <laughs> well, and that looks like, so a his and her snowman, I just pulled up like the price list for that. If we're going to try to keep, keep it, um, like they have a cool picture frame for a family that's only $800 with the festival logo on it. So we could put, you know, sponsored by the DDA on that and have, you know, the Harbor Springs Ice Festival on it. If we wanted to keep it kind of, and they have like Eskimo people and logo for 700. So I think that there's a couple really good options that aren't getting much over the thousand dollar mark. So can we leave this, Nikki, can you and Margo get together on this and pick a couple? Yeah. Yep. Why don't we do that? Great. Should, Should we have a vote on it? Does everybody agree? I don't think we need a vote on it. Are we all okay with us? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Take it and I trust them to do it, so thank you. Yeah, I, I, surprises. I can't wait to be surprised. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, the next thing is ice, the ice bus advertising. Um, so we are starting to add, and I'm just adding ice Fest to the social media and the website. But the exciting thing is that Bonnie has arranged now um, nine and 10 is willing to do a segment on Friday, February 12th in the afternoon um, to come and view the sculptures and, and do a, a small piece on that. But that, and then they're also willing to do the Wednesday morning segments that we discussed. I'm a little nervous on those just because of it's five days after those, those have been, um, the sculptures have been put up and obviously it's been, if it's sunny like it is right now, um, we know what happens. But, but right now we're on, on schedule to do both the 12th and the, the 17th. Oh, okay. So I don't know if there's any thoughts on that. On I, I think, think it's exciting. The more publicity we could get, the better. Yeah, I would agree. So on the 17th, um, Margo, you will get to tell them where they are going to go. So you'll be able to pick and choose, right? Um, some locations and things, and so you'll be able to see which ones are still holding up better. Um, I would encourage you to get, usually it's, what, seven segments, and they usually like to interview four other people beside you, three to four other people beside you. They'll start with you, and then they'll move on to businesses and the business owner. So I would encourage you to sort of reach out to some of your businesses and see who would be willing, because it is early morning, <laughs> and it's really early, let me tell you, um, but it's great publicity. So um, between you and the businesses, you can kind of figure out um, in advance, even if things, if it's sunny, 
uh, I would encourage you, if at all possible, do not cancel that and <clears throat> get them here and just show them the best possible light of those uh, sculptures. Great. And I, and I know we have a couple people that have already said they would be willing to be part of that early bird crew. Wonderful. Um, Nikki, I know you said you would, and Jody said she would, and so we, we can keep discussing um, yeah. who else wants to be out um, right. at 5 a.m. <laughs> um, you're, you're the big winner of the 5 a.m. That's fine. And then it goes from there. That's, that's, that's just fine. Um, all right, and then the, the other only other advertisement is that we have the Harbor Light advertisement. I believe I sent that um, to all of you. Uh, Victor, I think that should be in the packet there if we're happy with going ahead with that advertisement that I made. I am. Do we want to say anything about the restaurants um, offering special promotions or, or is that not really a big thing? I, I don't know that they are and it does say shop, dine and enjoy. Yeah, none of the restaurants are going to do anything special for this. We're uh, trying to make as much money as we can. So Good point. Chili isn't a big money maker. <laughs> no. Lobster chili? <laughs> Not as much as shoelaces. Mm. Yeah. All right. So we will be doing that. At, we'll be doing that advertisement and then an advertisement of follow-up uh, thank you advertisement after the, the, the ice fest for all of the sponsors, as we, like, similar to what we did last year. Perfect. Um, moving on, that moves us to the fire pits. So I don't know if everyone heard or... We're part of the, um, listen to the city council meeting on Monday, but Jody and I did go to, to the council with the idea of these fire pits. We have talked to both Kyle and John Cups and, and of course, Victor about the idea of them. Um, the fire pits at this point, just trying to keep things simple. Jody was, um, and a couple other staff members were willing to just let people, you know, bar, you know, loan their fire pits to come down to Marina Park. We're not offering s'mores or anything else, just kind of warming station um, place to be there. Denny said he'd be willing to bring some bench at some of the uh, park benches down. Um, and um, I know Kyle's on the phone. He said that he would, or on the Zoom, he said he would be willing just between pure staff that will be there because I know she'll, um, Jody has a staff member that's planning to be outside the whole evening along with um, the Kyle staff patrolling and then DDA members just being around. Um, both Kyle and Chief um, Cups thought that was going to be enough uh, supervision for the fire pit. So let, I mean, I'll let you guys tell me what you think. Great. Who, who, feeds, who feeds the fires then? It, will the peer staff do that? I think they would, and or if we want to have any DDA volunteers do it. I know I don't mind coming down and you know feed. I mean, it's we're setting them up from 5 p.m. till 8 p.m. Um, so it's not like they're going all day long. Um, more kind so of. This is just on. Is it just on Saturday? Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Is there is there going to be wood down by the fire? Well, that was my next my next thing that Jody and I talked, and she asked if. Um, if the DEA would be willing to sponsor the the firewood, and and I do have a firewood connection. I know there's a lot of there's a couple young guys around here that do have firewood um, businesses, and I'm happy to reach out to them and have them bring it down there, and then just kind of we we could stack it nicely. We even thought about asking Bonnie if maybe we could put it over by the chamber. Um, You're welcome to put it in the gazebo. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, um, that would keep it out of from people um, that building you know we're we're doing a, a bit of a redo on her anyway so that's absolutely fine with me for you to put the firewood in there oh that that's terrific thank you and then I know Jody said she'd just bring the fire pits over into their the pier you know enclosed area in the evening after Saturday for getting ready for Sunday so I've got one I bring down <laughs> I just got a new uh, solo fire pit I would be willing to bring that if I knew it was coming in at night so it has to be, I, the pit part has to be at least 12 inches off the ground. Um, 
Okay, yeah. that's that's the that was the only thing that John um, really felt was a requirement to not scorch the ground or anything like that. Great, this is a great idea. I also have a fire pit that I use for um, the uh, Christmas open house in my basement that stands probably 24 inches off the ground that the kids would always make s'mores in, but I can bring that down there too. Great. And if somebody um, has a truck, we have some firewood outside that we use in the summertime that we'd be happy to donate. Is would it? Do you feel like it would be enough, Nikki? I mean, I know that um, just keeping it several. Be enough, it may be enough for one night. I don't know if it would be enough for two nights. Margo, I'll take a picture of the stack that I have. I because I we I don't know a lot about like cords and all of that, so um, <laughs> I'll send you a picture. <laughs> and let you take a look at how much we have and if somebody is willing to have a truck and they can come and help us get it in a truck we'd be happy to donate it thank you yeah, great we're not building bonfires it shouldn't take that much so no. <laughs> unless the wood is absolutely so dry it just can't. well but yeah. i've had it outside for for a few for a couple of years so it might be pretty dry it might burn mm -hmm. well so we might want to have some starter material on hand too just to get them going initially we have, we, yeah, and we have fire starter sticks too from when we camp. So we have a bunch of those, but I can we do bring too. Down. We have Great a way to not have to pay for wood. <laughs> Chief uh, Knight, I, I just, oh, oh. Yeah. sorry, Margo, just, um, it's going to snow potentially 12 to 24 inches in the next week, potentially. So thank you, Victor. Yeah. Please, <laughs> please, <laughs> your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> my only comment is fire pits, making sure that they don't sink. I don't know how, how well, because they're met, usually they're metal and they usually sink a little bit in the snow. So I don't know how that's going to affect a 12 inch rule from, from the ground or not. I'm, I'm just, just throwing that out there. So something to talk with John or something so about. So one thing John recommend is suggested to me and maybe in a situation like this, he said he was fine if we put down um, well, like board. Um, I don't know. A, what is that? that cement, that kind of that cement board that you use to, you know, cut yeah. some squares to put underneath the, the underneath I the would, bases of it. And I would recommend doing something like that. We just did, um, me and the staff from my salon, we did the Enchanted Trail at Boyne, which was awesome. But their fire pits, because they have fire pits that are also up off the ground like that too. But our, my only, my only skepticism of that is around the fire pits from when they're burning that snow and the ground around it gets real icy and it almost creates like a little bit of a ledge. So if people aren't paying attention, you can hit that ledge and you can kind of slip a little bit. We saw, we saw a kid that kind of slipped a little bit towards the fire. So I would definitely make sure that there's something around it that's more steady that isn't going to get icy. Yep, that's a good point. Nikki. We want to just reduce liability on the city's end for that. So yes, thanks. and that was the one thing I had reached out to um, somebody at Boyne and just said, you know, put something around it because it was a little, a little slip. Okay. Uh, Mar Margo, this is Denny. Um, just another thought would be maybe to use the upright heaters, outside heaters. It would be less labor intensive, uh, maybe safer. And maybe there's a possibility that we can borrow some for the event. Well, I, when Jody and I looked at it, we, 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 the ones she sent me were pretty expensive um, as far as the, the cost for, if, for the DDA to purchase those, Denny. But I mean, if, if people were willing to loan them, I, you know, I, I don't have a problem with it. I just don't have a resource for that at this point. I mean, they're, they're definitely not as cool as a fire, but they, it'd be a lot less to take care of. I like the idea of the fire and my concern is if we get all that snow, putting those pedestal heaters up could be a challenge to keep them level. How hard would it be to shovel out little round areas where we could have benches and um, the heaters? I, you know, the fire pit people stand around. They'll just stand under the, the pole here. Uh -huh. I like the fire pits and I think it makes things a little less complicated and we already have those. I was just, yes. you know, suggesting a way to make sure that the, the snow, especially if we get the snow that we're seeing around it as it melts and gets slippery, that we're just mindful about making sure that nobody or a kid doesn't slip and go closer to the fire than they need to. Sure. 
So can we hand this off to Jody and the promotions committee to hammer out the final details with our blessings? Yes. Yes. Great idea. Okay, great. All right. The, the only other thing on the promotions committee right now is the, the we were hoping to have the takeout challenge and to do a drawing by um, Ice Fest. Unfortunately, I, you know, I found out that we would, we did need to do a gaming license for that. Still haven't received our license number back, but it's in process and we can do a, you know, when we get that license number, we'll be able to do a February, whether it's a dining challenge, dining slash takeout challenge at that point. And it's for, could be just for, you know, submit your receipts if you've dined in or taken out and um, that's a great idea you know, and then um do one for february and one for march we are restricted that we can't be giving any for each drawing we can't give anything larger than 500 dollars. so because of one, the, the one question i had are the prizes on number of times you've dined out or amount of money you spend because that might be might be nicer to do number of times i don't know when we had initially talked about it Make in the it promotions committee, it was yeah. about um, just s submitting receipts of $50 or more. And even that meant, even if you went out two times for $25, you could staple them together and count it as one submission. Okay. Great. Okay, let's move into our next. Okay. Next is, um, the downtown enhancement committee met and asked if um, parks and rec director Denny would McDermott would give kind of a update on what's happening in the marina, and he has come with a lot of great marina concepts and things that great. he's been working on. So, okay, well, um, thanks for putting it on the schedule. I think it's a priority for all of us, and that's being supported by the surveys that we're taking for the master plan. Um, I think everybody would like to see us move forward with something at Marina Park. Um, so I'll pick up the discussion with what we know right now. Um, we, the city, do, we don't have any funding to do anything um, this year at Marina Park. So if we decided to do something, we would have to come up with the funding. Um, we know that uh, moving forward at development at Marina Park has kind of been pending the Marina Master Plan. Last fall, council decided that we would stay with um, our long range goal to do something with the marina building. Um, at council meeting also, BJ, the chairperson, said it would probably be about two years before they got the money to be able to move forward with that big um, marina project. Um, but there were, and plus that they would also need some general fund money. I think the reality is, is if we're probably not going to see anything happen um, with the marina plan for within two years. It's probably going to be longer than that. So if we wanted to do anything, any upgrade at Marina Park, it would have to be in the footprint of the green space that will be available after the marine harbor building is moved. So we're still kind of in a holding pattern. Um, obviously, we don't want to build something that's going to interfere with that project or invest in something that we're going to have to move um, because of that project. Um, but there is another option, and that would be instead of doing a total teardown and rebuild of the harbor building, that maybe they just do some renovations to it to add uh, a laundry facility. Um, they were also wanting to put in um, a boaters um, area where they can hang out and stuff. I think that the possibility of doing that would mean that we would be able to move forward, not just for doing something at Marina Park, but also the Marina would be able to have some facilities sooner than later that would benefit the boaters. Jenny, does the Harbor Commission agree with that approach? No, no they, they don't agree. I, don't, I think it's still an option we can look at um, so what I suggest is that um, we put together a committee um, and we look at some concepts and some ideas of what we could do at Marina Park, either with the footprint that's going to be left after the building is moved or 
what we could do at Marina Park and also do the run and throw out the idea of doing renovations at the Harbor Building that um, if we put together a committee and we came up with a strategy that we can then revisit that with council um, in the spring. Uh, Denny, can I ask a question, Josh Baker? Sure you can. And I might've just missed it, but could, should not the Marina Park concept be part and parcel of the Marina Building? I mean, rather than having us wait for the leftover, not us, rather than having the town wait for the leftover to, to do something in Marina Park, can it be part and parcel? I mean, it can be separated, separated out financially, but it seems to me it'd make a lot more sense to look at it as a whole picture. Yes. Um, if we did something, it would have to be in the footprint of what's gonna be the green space that's gonna be available after the building's moved. So the building is gonna be moved over to the west that will create some open space on both the east and west sides of the building. So we're, we're kind of handcuffed by that, but there are some abilities to phase things in. If we came up with a plan that we thought was good, um, that we could, we could phase it in, sure. But can the water, will the water commission um, at least um, look at this on a, on a broader scale as opposed to just the, their building? I can answer that question, Josh. So Harbor Commission, they're solely focused on what is controlled by the water waterfront funds usually, and that usually is the Harbor Master Building and what goes on in the water. The park itself, the green space, that's control of the entire city. So it's really not the Harbor Commission's realm to look at what goes on at that space. I mean, we certainly can have, a, if Denny's idea is one that people wanna go through, have a committee, and certainly or should certainly have a Harbor Commission member beyond that committee. Yeah. Um, but at this point, the Harbor, the Harbor Commission, when they designed this, this new building, they were looking at only redesign of the building and the building being relocated. And by the fact that the building had to be relocated, it shifted uh, the shape and size of the green space. And they're not concerned what goes on in the green space. And that's more for a city council staff and potentially a committee to deal with. So that's why. So they, I don't think as a commission that the Harbor Commission will actually get into any of details about what happens on that green space. They all, they'll have their preference, but that's not within their purview. Okay, can it be meshed at all? It, it, it just seems, and I, I understand that, it just seems that we're missing an opportunity to create kind of a whole project as a part of, instead of two separate projects that are involved in the exact same space, exact same footprint, basically. I mean, is there, is there any chance, you, you just mentioned having a water, uh, front commission person being on the Marina Park or however that goes, my terms are off, but um, it just seems to me is that we're, we're planning two things at once, two separate things at once, and one's just having to be forced to wait and listen to the other. I mean, it, 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 it is some kind of thing, even as Denny said, the, the, the boaters would be interested in having some sitting area. Okay, well, well let's work that in but let's, it, it just seems right now, and I apologize, I know there's a lot behind this, but it just seems right now that there are two separate uh, things going, happening at once in the same thing with potentially the same goal. I think Josh point. brings up a great, great point that, that yes, and I agree with Victor, with that, Victor, I, you know, I've been in on those other meetings as well. And I think what, if I, if I can rephrase that, Josh, and tell me if I'm saying it wrong, when we come up with a design or a plan for the green space, can we come up with a design and a plan for the green space and that building, but then we know that that building might not happen right away, but if that building spills out to a little area that they sit at where there's a drinking fountain or a grill or, or whatever, uh, make the whole thing one cohesive thing. So I don't build a... I don't build an A-frame and you build a flat next to each other and have it all look together. And I understand that the Harbor Commission is just going to pay for their building and maybe the area right adjacent to the building. But whoever designs or whatever is on that committee for the, the green space, they should go together. Is that kind of what you're saying, Josh? Yeah, I, we have the opportunity to 
to to to look at this thing as a whole as a part as instead of two separate pieces and it's a huge it's a huge deal that that that's our biggest open viewing area of the water it's used by a ton of people a huge amount of users restaurant users this summer was fantastic right now we're talking about fire pits for winter time uh city uh, boaters could potentially use it in a different way and right now we're going to say okay you guys do what you're going to do and then we'll make ours work around it which i don't it just feels it just feels off it just i i think we have the opportunity to blend this thing and really do a a, a good cohesive broad plan as if i could jump in separate. this this is part of the whole uh planning process as things get narrowed down it, from a landscape architecture point of view is meshing um the hardscape with the greenery and making sure that they reflect each other and work together and that circulation works between the two. So I, I think that would not be something that would be ignored. I think a planning effort could continue on the green space most certainly um, with the idea of working it in with the Harbor Master building. No, and I, I'm gonna agree with Dana there because the, right now what has happened was the Harbor, the, the plans for the Harbor Master building have already been set. It's a matter of whether they're going to have the funds to do them in two years, five years, or or whatever. And nothing could happen in potentially five years. And if that doesn't happen, and we don't do any planning for the current green space, we're going to be stuck with nothing at the Marina Park as well, which has been a big concern of a lot of people. So right now, the, the plans for the new building have been set, but the plans for the green space or the potential future green space have not been set. So I think what De how Denny has phrased it is, it's potentially where one phase is to do the building and another phase is to the green space. And I think by involving the Harbor Commission and other people on some sort of committee that deals with the Marina Park, you'll have that holistic view of the building meshing in together with the green space. Okay, thanks, Victor. I, I was, I didn't, I zoned out on the part where it's, it's actually, okay, thank you. That's a lot. No, 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 no. So, so if we can yeah. get, so, so, so if we can actually mesh the two, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. I really like the idea of a committee. Can we get some volunteers from the various entities uh, to sit down with Denny? Denny, you might want to lead that effort to see who yeah, you want I, and I plan look at going that. look at going forward in in the in the interim. Are there some short term things that we can do that would not be an obstacle to a future plan, like? Um, replacing yes. that grass in the middle that doesn't mesh with the other or putting up some large pots of flowers or something to just dress it up while we, it's a Band-Aid, but can we, is there a Band-Aid we could use? Yes. Uh, what's the thought, Denny, for the summer on the, the shade sale area? Okay, I, I can um, speak on that. So we, um, I think generally people like the sales. Um, it did create um, an atmosphere, a place for people to gather. Um, the challenges we had though is the, the location that we picked to put the sales, which I think the council decided to, to go with that location because it was gonna be less intrusive for the actual view. So by putting them over where we did, it didn't block the view uh, but the issue was, is the water, that is noticeably, the area we put the sails is noticeably over two foot down than the area that used to have the tennis courts. And the yeah. foundations for the sails should have went down four foot. We only went down two and a half foot because we hit water. So we dug the holes. We used a sump pump to draw the water out. Um, and then we poured the cement, but it was still really too wet there to hold the sails in place. So the posts started to bend in towards each other, which took the tautness out of the sails. Also in that area, we, we ended up putting the sails going, um, going north. We should have had them in a different location to get the best use of blocking the sun from the people underneath it. So if we were to use the sales again, um, our recommendation would be to go to council and see if they would again consider option A or option B noted on the map. 
prior to doing that, let's say that I think once the frost is gone, it would be in our best, um, it would be best for us to dig the hole, or at least dig a couple monitoring holes to see, make sure we're not going to hit water. And then we'll know that we have a better spot than where we put them last year. Does that make sense? It does. Yes. Yeah. We do have a chat from um, Bonnie. This was from the previous conversation about selfishly, I must ask where does a chamber gazebo in that area fit into these plans? I think she was referring to the the, the new Marina Park plans. And I'm not sure I have to get back exactly on, on how the new plan would affect the chamber well, location. It may or may not. So I'll get right. back to you on that, Bonnie. And, and I think putting together a committee, it'd be nice to um, have Bonnie on it. Yes. Please. Thank you. Um, along with a lot of other people. So I just, going back to the Marina Park, I think we have to move forward on something. I don't know. Yes, if we, we do. Can, can't wait another five years. Um, it'd be nice if we knew the fate of the Harbor Building. But anyways, um, going back to the sales, I think if we reuse the sales, I think they were a good idea. I think we could do better. But if we did, we would have to take option A or B. C was not popular because of the amount of um, how it would obstruct the view of the bay. It would. A a is set right by some existing hedges that are there. So we thought when um, when Margo, myself, Lucas, and the harbor master picked these spots, um, we liked option A because there was already some hedges there and we were kind of hiding those hedges, which we thought was a win-win. You know, I mean, I have to speak up, but it's not coming from me, although I, I was against the sales and I still am against the sales, so full disclosure. But everybody I talk to, whether they be boaters of the Marina Park or, or people in the, the work in the city or my clients, all complained about the way they looked, about the sound they make, about how close the picnic tables were underneath so they couldn't social distance if they wanted to because I had a picnic table right next to the other one. And because of the high winds, it, it, I mean, it just, to me, was, uh, I didn't hear anything good about it whatsoever. Mostly what I heard is that was a waste of money. And that's just coming from other people, so don't kill the messenger. But um, I did not hear one good thing about the sales when they were in there. Jenny, at some point, are we going to get a readout on the um, surveys that went out on recreation? Because I haven't seen it. I don't know if anybody else has. Yes, there's some available on our website now. I just wonder if we're maybe getting a little bit ahead on saying we're definitely putting the shade sales back in and maybe that's something to discuss in the committee when it's formed. And yes, I would love to be on that committee. Thank you. <laughs> I agree with that. Can we get that committee going and, and have a twofold approach? One would be uh, the, the short term for this summer and maybe a few thereafter and then also looking at uh, going down the road. Yes, that that would be the that would be the charge of the committee to come up with several different options. One yes. one option would be to just do a remodel on the Harper Building, and that would give us we would know the known of what we have to work with. The other option would be doing something in the footprint of the building being moved. Um, there would be some short term, like you mentioned, if this is going to take three years for us to even to do anything, we need to get started now. We do have the planning process, but also, like you mentioned, there would be some small things that we could do at Marina Park to dress it up in the meantime. Uh, that's, that would be the charge of the committee. Jenny, my recommendation and Dan, uh, Kathy, my recommendation is if we're going to have this committee consist of potentially people across the spectrum and not just DDA members, then it probably should go to uh, as a rec make a recommendation to council to form a Marina Park committee that Great. Denny could lead as a staff member, and then we could take people from each board and, and the public. That way, it's, it's more of a wide function than just a DDA. Uh, it shouldn't function. be a DDA committee, but yeah. we would just be part of it. But I like that. Matt, are you good with that? Thumbs that's up. Assuming, that's, what assuming, that's a yes. OK. Yeah. yeah. So then you guys Great. can say Hard about your time on you. or whatever you want. Yep. Great. OK. Denny. Thanks, Denny. Yep. Thank you. You got us moving. Okay. okay, next. 
So that also the, the, that kind of coincides, the shade sale discussion, all of that coincides kind of with the outdoor dining um, discussion that the, the downtown enhancement committee had that I think that we are really seeing that we're going to need um, a, there is a need for outdoor dining uh, this summer that things aren't changing. I know Matt brought this up at council and I think he's brought it up here in the DDA meeting that, I mean, this, this isn't going away. These, I don't think some of the capacity restrictions are going away yet, you know, so we, that is something that has come up and in, in our committee on looking at how we want, you know, would like to possibly approach um, advocating, assisting, help, helping, or doing whatever the DDA can do to encourage some of the outdoor dining efforts. I know um, I've had mixed feedback from different people that um, until it, it seems like what more of the people are, are wanting on at least the DDA members are want to do is look at an established what one or two locations of outdoor dining to advocate for it, as opposed to um, since it didn't seem like most of the restaurants wanted to do they either had their own outdoor dining already or um, they were not we're going to choose not to. Um, then we need to, to see what we could look at for advocating for whether it's a closed off area back into the parks or, or what we were going to, what we want to think about. So that's definitely a priority as we go forward. Should that be on the list with the park committee to look at? I mean, if we're looking at the shade sale, there is location right there as a place for dining. I would, well, I, think, I would tend to think that's just one place where the dining might be, um, that maybe it's the Downtown Enhancement Committee can continue to work on it. Okay, good idea. And Denny, we, I know, oh, I'm sorry. I know you no. sent me a, um, a schematic, was it on the, the Spring Street? I, I did. Okay, um, Victor, do you have that? Mm. No, not that, not the parking lot, the, the schematic, the, like a walkway, um, a, a, it was sent, hold on, if I can share, I don't know if I can, <laughs> go back to sharing, but. Has there been Again, a, has, let me just pull it up, hold on one sec. Has there been any kind of uh, questionnaire or anything like that focused solely on the restaurant owners so that we can kind of check off each restaurant and their, their wishes on this? No, but that is something I can definitely do is, is either email directly or a survey um, what the restaurants, because I would like to do or what their needs are. I like that idea, great idea. Um, this was um, in, in working with on a master plan, I used a lot of resources. This was actually taken from a study that Wade, Wade Trim did with the city downtown development. Um, you're looking at here is a really cool concept. It's a, a linear park um, that goes um, right down from actually where the boardwalk comes down on Spring um, on Spring Street and goes all the way to Marina Park. Well, this is just a bigger concept of this. We were able to do something really fantastic at Marina Park, being it is like the focal park. This could be something down the road that I think would be a pretty awesome, you know, pretty awesome project to add to it. Just, it's just a thought. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought that was really neat, really great. It also creates some outside dining. Um, the challenges with this plan that the committee ran into also is displacing the, um, the parking there. So if you did create a linear park connecting the downtown to the waterfront, we would still have some displaced parking. Um, the plan talked about putting in a parking structure uh, somewhere downtown, not where it was very high, but there would be underground parking. These are just concepts, nothing. I'm just trying to, these are some ideas that we could um, incorporate as we move uh, forward. Some of the issues that came up when we were looking at the Spring Street were in the, in the block next to Tom Graham, uh, his, he has a parking entrance behind his building and he was not going to let us do away with that. So that shortened that park and you would have cars driving into the front half up to, to Tom's spot. And the other part was with the bank building being so tall there, 
uh, the view options were next to nothing. It was just going to be a transition from one space to the other. I Interesting like idea. I'm sorry. It seems like we might be getting a little bit ahead of things again. Yeah, um, we are. It was throwing just, all this stuff at it and let's see what sticks. I think maybe we should meet as a committee and kind of Let's at, take this back to the Downtown Enhancement Committee yeah. now that we know that there will be some conversation with another committee on the uh, shade sale dining area in that park. Let's uh, get our committee back together and talk about that. Okay, Margo, you want to take it to the next? Yep. So I started digging into the, the third area that the Downtown Enhancement Committee really wanted to revisit was the Spring Street parking lot. Um, so I, I looked into the information that we had. I got the um, schematic from, and from Joe. Um, this is, the lot was done when the lot was paved and, and done. This was the cost that it, it was that to take to do the project and to create that lot. Um, so that was what was done. I, I reached out to Tom, who Rachel had originally been talking to from Traffic and Safety. His original email shows and that, I mean, it, it was looking at a full parking meter for the entire downtown area. And that's obviously not something we're thinking about. Um, so I just included it so you could know, you could see what what had been done um, and what what he had worked with her on. Um, for our purposes, that's really not, that's not what we're looking to do. We're really just looking to, is this going to be a revenue driven, you know, par parking lot? What is the possibility? Um, he told me to have the gate, his suggestion yeah, was why? to have um, a key fob entrance gate, that if we wanted to go that route, that would probably be the most cost effective. Um, doing a keypad brings up more equipment, more cost. Um, and, you know, if, if business owners who chose to rent a spot from there um, had a key fob for their employee that, and we had a designated number per, per business, um, then that would work that way. And it was about $5,400 for the gate to be installed with the equipment and the fobs. Um, he's giving me a, a complete quote, but that was what he, he said that does not include the concrete pad or the electric, but he said that if there's electric right there already from a lamp post or transformer, which I, I would believe there would be nearby, he was thinking, estimating that the po power would be about $3,000 and the concrete pad would be about another $3,000. Um, but he's getting me a, a direct quote. Now, at the, you know, now it's a matter of also doing another survey to the businesses of whether this is something they would be in support of and they'd be interested in, in, um, in paying uh, for their employees or, um, and then looking at whether this is, you know, something that we, we wanna go ahead. We did, and I know I'm talking that I'm jumping ahead, but we did meet, have a committee meeting between the city and the DDA as far as things like this moving forward on cost sharing revenue, you know, on, on projects like this. So all that stuff is in the works, but that's that's where we're at on that. If we choose to continue to pursue it, can we look at doing a survey? And I guess my question in there was: we probably should give people a price range. Exactly. They might say sure, yes, until it comes back. So um, I think Tim, didn't you say that your lot what three hundred dollars a month behind you in the summer? Um, yeah, there's uh, there's some people and Josh who can confirm that I do believe pay three hundred dollars a month for the the months that are in the summer months. I don't believe anybody rents space in the winter time. Yeah, so and I think it's I think it's three hundred for the for the three months. I think okay. three months. Yeah, okay. it's not that expensive. I just did a quick little deal. If we I think there are twenty three spaces in the thing that was up. Let's say we do twenty bucks a month. That's uh, uh, four hundred sixty dollars a month. That's 12 months, that's $5,500 a year at $20 a month. For that's 20 too months. light. Yeah, that's not, and, but it's I don't know. It's going to be a really long break even on all that stuff that has yeah. to be put in. Uh, that, that's just, a, that's at 20 bucks a month, which just to me seemed kind of reasonable. If someone's going to buy a year long, then that's, 
you know, 240 bucks a year for parking from zero to 240. Is it that that's, that's something to consider. I think. So can we do this now that if we're, if we, the DDA is all um, in on exploring this, can we hand this back to the downtown enhancement committee to come up with some suggested price points to use in a survey and then have Margo take the survey out? I think that's a good idea. Great okay. idea. Let's, let's do that. The one thing I would recommend though, is if we, if we did that, make sure that you have not only if we're gonna do summer pricing that we have, if people are interested in year round pricing for the businesses yeah. that are here year round, um, obviously June, July, and August, or even July, August, and September, you know, those prices could possibly be higher. But if we have a business that wants to do year round, we should have definitely have a price point for that as well. I do think the price should be more than the, than the cost of two parking tickets a month. So well, we should. I, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, I don't think, I mean, that was a little bit lower than what I was even thinking. And I'm yeah. looking at wanting five spots. So, yeah. and I was willing to, you know, that was a lot lower than what I was thinking the price would have been. But I definitely think that we should, you know, look at the businesses that have, that are here year round as well. And then also have pricing for summer, but make sure that it's open for the businesses and not necessarily the public. Okay, let's take this back to committee. Oh, Kyle has his hand. Just real quick, when the committee meets on the parking, could you let me know? I wouldn't mind being involved just because- Oh, you should be. The one. All right, just on the parking alone. I just, we're gonna be the no, ones that are have to enforce something. So thank you. The only now, thing- Go ahead two that I'd like to recommend is just, is for someone who does a major event in this community, um, block, and blocking off a lot with a gate, um, just if it's not used as much on a times where I have, where our events are going on, um, that limits, you know, people who are coming into town access for one more spot. Yeah. So that's, I would be more of looking at a permit basis versus a, um, keep up to, and a gate to get in and out. I it is available on a, yeah, when we do stuff on a Sunday morning, we lose 23 spots. So. Yeah. And the the downside of that from the committee perspective is that it's going to re require a lot more supervision by Kyle's people on a permit where there's next to none if there's an arm. But we could certainly look at bringing the arm up for two days if all of the people in there agree. Yeah. That, yeah. Okay. Great. Margo, Margo, when you guys had the downtown enhancement committee meeting regarding this, Nick brought up a good point. Perhaps check with Jim Raymer someone to see if there was any deed restrictions on when we bought the land that, that comes with how we could use that parking lot. I'd, I'd, probably there isn't, but we just want to make sure before we get too far ahead. Okay. 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 And also, and also, yeah, just one more thought too is, would we want to um, just for a month even trial permit parking, just to save that uh, $12,000 or whatever? But let's take this back to committee and let us come, yeah, okay. come up with some ideas. Okay, can we okay. go on? We got yep. several more things on the agenda. All right. Finance uh, committee. So the finance committee did not meet this um, since the last committee meeting, but Nick did get me all of the the ledgers, and so I need to. We will, I'm going through that, and then we can meet and just make sure everything is you know, the accounted in the right accounts as, as we had discussed that that was going to be our new process. Okay. So. Hey, real quick though, since Nick's on the line, can we, uh, I mean, the DDA currently has like $40,000 in their bank. Is that correct? We didn't yes. spend all the money last year. We were trying to be frugal and not, not blow through everything. Right. You, you came out of that year looking pretty good. <clears throat> wow. Looking better than years past. And we're still collecting taxes, including TIF and your special assessments up until uh, actually 10 days from now. So if the ice fest is bringing in that kind of revenue and nothing out of the ordinary jumps up, it looks like this is gonna be another boost to your fund balance this year. And, and good. that's a good thing. Great, I just wanted to 
bring that up that we haven't met as a finance committee, but we are moving things in the right direction and trying to be cognizant of our spending as well as uh, build up our balances as we go forward. Exactly. Okay. Margo, tree right. grates. Yes, I, gave, I sent you all the um, tree grate, the bid schedule. So that is, you know, the, it has been um, advertised. Yay. Um, the two options, the two options are both being advertised to be bid upon, you know, the, the more of the patchwork option, and then also the, the standardization option. Um, and if you slide that up, Victor, it, that is set to go, um, yeah, the bid opening will be the 24th, and, and then we can, we will take that to council on, I think that's March 1st, is that would be that council meeting. Um, once those once those bids are open, and then if if they choose to go ahead, then the a bid would be awarded the on the second. Okay, good. Just a question, and if they decide not to go ahead, um, do, does it take time for fundraising to come up with any discrepancy and um, making up the difference? Well, we're already at at fundraising for the trees. We already we already put that that twenty thousand dollars that that was going to be an effort that the DDA was going to do for the if we went with the full the full project that was thirty eight trees you know at five hundred dollars a tree and we were saying that that was going to be a a DDA led effort or either coming from our our funds or from fundraising so I mean that is part of part of that now if the I don't know what the bids are going to end up coming back at as far as any discrepancies there. Okay, let's see what happens. Wait and see. We'll have more work to do. Okay, the next thing was that the DDA and city formed a committee to kind of look at things. Um, Kathy, I don't know if you want to do a recap on, on how that meeting went or- It was great. We had there. some great conversation about uh, where we have been and where we are and where we're going. So we, uh, there were two council and two of us and uh, as well as Victor and Margo. And uh, essentially what we have are working towards is that the DDA will have a, a percentage of our budget for maintenance of our projects. And that might not be 100% of the maintenance costs, but it's what we can't afford. So for changes, uh, to, uh, not changes to the kiosks, as far as a directory, that is our direct response responsibility, but damage, paint, uh, things like that to the signs, as well as other projects going forward, like the tree grates, we will have a look at setting a percentage of our budget. And then the city, we would work with the city on top of that. So for their contribution to the remaining amounts, kind of like what we've always said is that the downtown development authority develops, and then we will work together with the city to maintain. Um, I thought it was a great meeting. It's nice to get some of that out behind us. Victor, does that, is that a sum up that makes sense? Yeah, that was, um, that's exactly what it is. So I think it was a great meeting. I think we at least have a path forward now on, on projects and maintenance can put that behind us and, and hopefully both the city and the DDA can find more revenue. So this is not as big of a deal in the future where DDA wants to pay for everything. We would love to. We're, we'll, we'll find it. Working on it. Just put the parking meters up. We'll be fine. Oh, we sure will. That parking garage, six stories tall, would do it too. Okay, tip reporting. All right. Um, just a brief update on the tip report is Nick and I are, are we started looking into doing the report. We are at a bit of a standstill because the 2019 audit isn't finished um, on the city. There was an extension filed for that that should cover us and on our report um, and as the DDA and, and all the city's entities. So as soon as that is that one is done, we will complete the 2019 TIF report, get that in. The city, the auditors will come back do the 2020 audit, and then we will be able to get that one in, which is not due until um, June. And um, 
we one thing we do need to make sure we do for 2021 is have the two public TIF um, open TIF reporting meetings. So that's that's kind of where we stand on that. Great. So are you going to schedule them now? I mean, that is something in my trying to remember with Rachel. I mean, if we don't get those scheduled and on the books and don't do them, then we can't do the TIF. It's, I believe it's the law, and Victor would probably know more about the law than I would, but um, obviously that's a very important deadline for those. Yes, yeah, so yeah. my understanding is they, don't, they can even be back to back, but as long as we publicly invite you know, those that we capture TIF to, that um, capture the TIF from, um, and invite them to the open public meeting on that, that um, then, then we, and we have to have two of those in the calendar year. I think we did those before in like September and October. What, you wanna look at that for this year? Yeah, it was like, I think it was September and December or it was That's October and December or something like that. Okay. I can't remember what, what it was last Let's when they did that, but um, yeah, so. That. Is there is there any reason we can't have them earlier? Just because if we do it in September and something maybe COVID phase two hits and nobody has you have to stay in your house with an ankle bracelet on, you can't meet, and then we lose the TIF. So is there any reason why we can't have them earlier so we don't go close to the 2021 deadline of having two meetings? If I could just interject here briefly. Yeah. I think my... You know, just my recommendation is these public informational meetings for the TIF, you know, even though they're open to the public, they're kind of geared towards the people that we're capturing TIF money on, you know, the, the cemetery and the college and blah, blah, blah. I would recommend spacing them out and having a meeting just before the taxing period of the summer taxes and then one just before we start capturing winter taxes. So maybe like June and November, or June and October or something like that. That's when the two tax periods begin and end. But that's just, it doesn't matter, but it just seems logical to me that it goes with the tax cycle. That makes sense. And I, I like yeah. that because then it's your, your two or three months before the very end of the year in case something does happen, you can still have that, uh, that meeting. Right. Nobody okay. will show up from the taxing other units. I mean, that they just won't, but we at least will be doing what we're required to do for the TIF reporting. Okay. I, I like I'm, happy, I'm happy with June and October. So we, I can just, I'll put it right on the schedule for that. Great. Thanks, Margo. Thanks for your input, Nick. That was awesome. Thank you. I did okay. want to go back. I'm sorry, Kathy. I don't mean to. I, I did want to make a note. Just back in the fire pits, the alcohol consumption is only for that weekend. That had been that that ordinance had expired in November, and so I just wanted to, you know, so if you are, you know, planning to have a cocktail or something like that, that that is only for that that they the council reopened it and allowed it just for that weekend, the President's Day weekend, the Ice Fest weekend. So just for me, I understand. I can get it to go. I can go into the, to New York and I can order a vodka tonic to go. He puts it in a plastic glass with a lid on it, and I can leave and take it over to that area and and drink it. After that weekend, isn't it? Don't they have to go alcohol still happening in the city where I can add, get a vodka tonic or a glass of wine? They put it in a cup and I leave it to take it home to eat with my dinner. No, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Victor. I just thought I may have misunderstood that. No, no. So what, what happened was those ordinances expired, I think, the administrative ordinances in November. We have to go back to council to reinstate them for the rest of the year. So that's why council only temporarily approved it for the weekend of President's Day weekend until we can um, relook at it. And that's why I went through the part of it was going through the planning commission. So I imagine we'll go through to council in March on March 1st for a uh, for a, a approval, a temporary approval of all those ordinances again. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they, I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but I think they went really well. And even for the boaters, if the boaters could, you know, there's not a liquor store downtown Harbor Springs, but if I could go get, uh, you know, uh, four vodka tonics from, from one of the restaurants downtown and go back to the boat, that might help the restaurants as well. I, I mean, I don't know what are your thoughts, uh, Matt, you're a, you're a restaurant owner. Yeah, uh, they still are, I believe, the 
cocktails to go is still a thing. Um, it's just, we only set up the cocktails at the Marina park for the summertime, but, uh, okay. as far as I know, uh, Kyle, I don't know if you know anything about this, but, that, uh, that's, that's correct. According to the, or, our ordinance, you can't like consume alcohol in public like downtown. And so right. they made the exception for around the fire pits to allow this to happen. Um, the cocktails to go is no problem. You just take them home or you take it to the boat. That's no problem. The concern is, is that grabbing a cocktail, I don't care if it's out of Pearson's Pier or wherever, and walking around town with it. That's the that's the okay. illegal part of it. Right. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. Yeah, I think that I'm in support of the cocktails to go, and, and I don't have a problem. We just don't have a – people – we talked at the council meeting the other day about a social district. We don't have a social district because of the fact of their definition of a social district is adjoining area to a restaurant. We don't have that. The, it's across the street, so that's our issue. Okay. Thank you. We can Thank make you. State Street. We can make yeah. State Street a social district. <laughs> we could. I mean, that would be that would be. I and mean, we did close it down, put for music in the summer. But we're getting probably ahead of ourselves. But yeah, I think those are great ideas. Great. Okay, should we move into other business? Do we have any other or old? I do. Um, Kathy, would it be good to give everybody a recap on what we discussed about lighting? Um, we're going to leave it as a priority. Can, can I jump in just real quick? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So I did have a discussion with Victor about, about lighting. Um, and I guess the reason I didn't put it on the agenda was because um, given where the CIP is for, you know, moving forward, lighting's, lighting's not on the agenda. And I think, think going to his recommendation and I, he can speak for himself was that before we go to council asking, you know, to do a dive into the lighting, perhaps finish the tree grate project and kind of get some of this other stuff um, behind us um, before opening up another large scale project. But yes. Victor, you might want to you know, add your, what you, your opinion. Yeah, no, that was, that was, that was my opinion. I feel like um, just at this, we need to move um, slowly and steadily here and make sure we can execute some of these large projects successfully. And, and before we start going for more, uh, because we're, we're facing the same issue at, at council. I mean, it's in general fund, we're trying to do some projects, but we want to make sure we get them done right. And so I think if we start if we start going to council before we even have the tree tree grates even decided or or even put in yet, it just might be a little too soon. We want to see how successful that is. For just my opinion, I think it, it, it'd be beneficial. I think we do also need to figure out eventually, you know, obviously how much it's going to cost to do these lighting, what kind of extent of a project we want to do, and that can be done, you know, to a certain extent in, in house, you know, between staff, but before without going too far into whether we're actually going to go with the project and how it's going to be funded or something like that, that would, I, I feel it'd be better to get one project done out of the way and then move on. I mean, we're also working on the third street parking lot. We've got the Marina park committee going, we've got all these other things going that, you know, we just want to make sure we're not, we're not overwhelmed city staff and boards with all these different projects. And we only make small incremental progress on all of this instead of knocking some things out of the park. Do we table up till mid year? Well, let's get through. Yeah, I mean, we it, it stays on our radar, but not um, not for soon. But yeah, let's look at that later on for the downtown enhancement committee. Let's get through some of the summer projects first, and maybe look at it in the fall. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, do you have anything in public comment? And Thanks. if not, our next meeting will be scheduled for March fourth right here on zoom so if there's no other business i will suggest that we adjourn and we will see you all in march already wow awesome i know okay thank bye you bye everyone thank you bye, bye. Thank you. bye.